This is going to be part two of our discussion of Confessions of a Dangerous Mind from 2002 uh, with our new friends at the Let's Rewatch podcast. Now, if you caught us last week, you already know the score, but forgive me while I explain it to anybody that happens to have just jumped into this one without having heard the first. It's not critical you go back and listen to the first one. The way it works is uh, it's a movie that uh, Dave and I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, we recorded first with them talking about our memories and expectations of what it would be like to rewatch the film. And that's what you got last week. This week, uh, you're going to hear us having just rewatched it, talk with uh, Ash, Pat, Brett, and Sam about, uh, you know, how the, how the movie lived up to our expectations. The point I'm trying to make here is that regardless of whether or not you heard part one, I think you're going to love part two. Here it is. Hit a hammer. What is it? It's like the hammer song, right? No. <laughs> if I had a hammer. I don't know. I've never even heard of this song before, and they made it really? seem like a big fucking deal. Really? No. You've never heard if I had a hammer? No. Yeah, that's like an American folk song or something. Yeah. Is it a that folk was- song? Is it yeah. a folk song oh, if yeah, Chuck yeah, yeah. Barris wrote it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's like this land is your land, like in that realm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, so like it that. wasn't the song that he wrote. I assumed it was the song that he wrote the whole no. time. No. No. It's the first joke I remember from Ellen DeGeneres back when she was a stand-up. Uh, she said, you know that song? If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the evening. And she's like, you know, and I went and got a hammer. And, you know, I found out, like... You don't actually do as much hammering as you thought you would. <laughs> I think it's a Fuck metaphor it, for his dick. <laughs> we're back. There you go. <laughs> we're back. And Sam, we're back. everything uh, is. Take control. Yeah. Everything True. is a <laughs> metaphor for her dick. <laughs> Pat, yeah. get in here. And now and she has a, a TV show. Just <laughs> hammer jokes, guys. Hammer time. Hammer Time. That's a good name for like a variety porn show. Okay, okay. Before we <laughs> yes, before we get too deep into it, not I was bad. not I expecting see what you did there. Oh <laughs> man, I really didn't. But wow, <laughs> I did. I was not expecting Rusty Venture to show up in this film. Oh goodness. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, Wait, oh, Ginger I know the character, but the yeah, the voice of Rusty Venture. Yeah, J- the guy. He's it's one scene. He's the guy who came and told him his the shows show are getting canceled. canceled. That's James That's Rusty Venture. Who's Rusty from Venture? the Venture Brothers? Doctor, Venture from the Venture Doctor Brothers. Doctor Brothers. Oh, watched a lot of. I didn't. Oh. His name is Rusty. Doctor well, that Venture. joke went over real well. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got Sorry, it. Ash. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. We're, we've got that immortalized forever in audio. Spread to the masses. Ash, you're going to be famous for that one. Well, you know what? It Whoosh. was better than a fucking hammer joke, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay well, oh, shit. That's what we should have done. Is <laughs> an MC Hammer song. <laughs> as far as someone just showing up for one scene, I'm not sure if the FCC guy... Is the the same guy I'm thinking of from uh, Scrubs, but oh re- no, but Doctor, re- I no. don't think it was. No, but it's not John C. McGinley. But I've seen okay. that dude and stuff. Very similar, I, I, though. I can see the yeah, I can see the right. comparison for sure. I want to. I really want to go on record saying like that might be like one of my favorite thirty seconds of acting ever <laughs> of comedic acting like the micro expressions i made dave rewind it it was and, unbelievable and we, we watched, watched it three times <laughs> yeah oh, three times yeah we did that's right we watched it three times there's it was unbelievable. so oh, much going on on that man's face yes <laughs> it's uh, I, it was it was a real treat yeah, yeah it was like they somebody didn't tell him what movie he was in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He thought I was in what full metal jacket or something. <laughs> that did have a full metal jacket feel to it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it did. But that's this- also kind of a Cohen Brothers thing where you bring in some fucking like person that like logically fits the narrative but is so goddamn weird <laughs> to yeah. see on screen to focus on. But everything they're doing is actually like 
you know, like perfectly logically fits the narrative. They're not just like dropped in to just be a weirdo. They're just really zooming in on a very weird aspect of. Right. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to see more of him. <laughs> no, just no, just that one, that one, that one 30 second. Just give him that. He must have worked so hard. <laughs> I hope he got a, a decent chunk of the of the pay for this. <laughs> for his like few C's. I mean, I no. hope unless unless that's how he is in real life. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just played himself. I oh, did laugh man. out loud though at the reveal of who the uh the secret spy was. Uh, I knew you would. I teased yes. that in the pre thing, right? That was great. Yes. God yeah. damn. Oh, right. <laughs> I'd forgotten dude. about it when I was watching the movie. I'd forgotten you said that, Todd. And then and then it happened. And I was like, oh, oh, that's the thing. That guy. Oh, shit. No way. Yeah, totally didn't see that coming. <laughs> Although I do. I, th- I feel like um, there's a missing scene in there that I would have appreciated, which is the uh, the flashback montage of whatever horrific murders he was doing while they were. Yes. Over there, you know? Yes. Yeah. And the uh, so the girl was in on it too? Like yeah. the baby. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's the best part. Cause you see her first. Yeah. Know? And I was like, uh-huh. wait, that's she was the, 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 the lady on the dating game. And then he shows up and you're like, Oh my god, they were both in it. And uh like you know, right. uh, and then they're kiss- I- and then they're kissing, which you know, yeah. in, in our yeah. show we we, we so like great. to flag like good and bad tradecraft. And even though like this element like it's very fantastical and beggars belief uh but we're both gonna give massive spy points to if you if you can accept that they were kgb infiltrators then Mm -hmm. their performance as people that did not know each other and did not like each other yeah was (laughs) absolutely brilliant yeah that was very good i do love that shot of like you have Matt Damon and fucking Brad Pitt, and they're like, I can't believe she keeps picking this one dude. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it even the more hilarious. Oh, but his answers are so fucking good, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, I, was know, so, I was like, still, what is happening? Yeah, and the best part, too, of all of that, like how they, how she picked him, oh. even though he had like the worst answers, like, uh, the rewards were like, you're going to West Berlin! And that couple yeah. was, when they, they were excited and then they realized what? Like, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, man. I, okay, I, I'm curious. Did Have any of you actually seen the the dating game or the, what was it, the newlywed show? I've seen show? the dating game and the newlywed show, yeah. Me too. Well, I saw the other one in the 80s when I was, like, really young. The Love Connection, I think oh, is what okay. it was called, which was similar. Yeah, but I don't think I've ever seen the dating game. Yeah, I was born, I, I think I'm the oldest person here. I was born in 71, so... I remember whoa, seeing. Whoa, get out of here, man! I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> just kidding. All right, would would you believe seventy two? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember. I remember seeing these shows, you know, in my childhood, but they they had no interest to me. Mm. You know, like. Yeah, I don't know why I've seen both of them, Nick and I night. feel like well, I remember watching them like, multiple times. Were they on like Nick at Night or yeah. something? Okay, that. But I also think they're 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 such significant cultural touchstones that yes. I don't think I've ever like watched an episode. But I'm very aware of like the structure, the tropes, the references of it because it is something that has been referenced, and mm-hmm. you've seen clips of it or parody, things parodying it or lampooning it. Yeah. Um, so often over the past 40 years right these these shows are so actually like deeply weird Mm -hmm. and and shocking i mean they're kind of like the newlywed show like if you haven't like that was only like a super small taste of it but like they would i was explaining it to my boyfriend because he'd never seen it either i was like it's this show where they literally take people who have just gotten married and they ask either one like all these questions about themselves in private, like away from the other one. Uh-huh, and right. then they yeah, stick yeah. them together and ask them like, what's what's so-and-so's favorite color? And the other person has to get it right. And it's so shocking. Like you watch the show and literally like 
most of the time they get the answers wrong and you can <laughs> see these people's newly formed marriage dissolving on TV. <laughs> right. It's crazy. Like, the shows the shows are kind of kind of misanthropic. They're kind of they're they're not feel good shows and I think that's why they they like resonate harder through the, you know, historosphere of the internet and become mm-hmm. tropes is because they were so weird. Like who, who, you know, how many jokes have you heard about, like, you know, what the $40,000 pyramid or whatever? Yeah. Like, none. But, like, mm. Dating Game and Gong Show and Newlyweds Game, those are, like, rich fodder for comedy. Oh, yeah. For, for going back and reinvestigating and, and retooling into... And that was a really big theme with those, is how much those shows were kind of degraded or degrading, uh, like, humanity. Because mm-hmm. it's like, like you're not really showing the darkness of humanity. You're literally creating darkness through like this weird, awkward moments on the like. It, like I, I really liked how they played that in with the story, as, as well right. as the parallel of the secret life of the assassin. Mm-hmm. And I'm cu- I'm really curious to hear what the gr- what the crew, what the let's rewatch crew thinks about like how. You know, did did that work for you? Like these kind of uh, pre Jerry Springer kind of, you know, uh, making humans look stupid and 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 foolish and flawed kind of thing. Did did that work? Did that work for you? In That's this very much a uh, uh, the viewership of those shows is like a measurement of how many bitter people there are in the country at any given time. <laughs> Uh, like the newlywed show in particular even when i was younger it was just like i don't think they like weddings very much i don't think they like this this whole thing uh yeah. it's very much a, like why'd you get married idiots the show you know <laughs> exactly exactly yeah but 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 brett i felt like like in in the late scene in the movie when they when they're playing uh you know uh if i had a hammer for real you know, because mm-hmm. earlier in the movie they'd spoofed it, and then later they're they're you know full throating, uh, fully involved, like Whoa, heartfelt, like this is the deep song. Deep throating it. <laughs> right. yeah, deep throating the hammers. <laughs> <laughs> Which side are they starting from? Am I right? <laughs> but I thought I th- I thought that was maybe like supposed to show the disconnect between his audience, himself, and his audience. I I think the audience mm-hmm. is really not all that bad. Like they they're just here to to enjoy themselves. They're just here for a quick little laugh. They're not here. They're not, um, I don't know. They're not exactly buying. They're buying what he's selling, but not on the same level. Mm. I think is what they were trying to say. in That's that's a whole philosophical discussion about (laughs) that. The the entire genre of reality TV that there's, I'm certain there's a hard line in the sand. uh, Well, I was going to say like this, this in, in comparison to a reality TV today, this feels incredibly tame. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) this does not feel like, like all these articles being like, he's a scourge on the entertainment and, and, and they were like making it into this big thing. And I'm just like, flash forward today where you have fucking Jersey Shore, (laughs) which I think is way worse. Which does exist. But what does exist is no, you're absolutely right, Ash. It's a travesty what they put on TV these days. Like Floribama Shore, which at last night of us recording Pat. this, <laughs> Amy's cousin, younger cousin, came oh, to visit no. the house in oh, Montana. No. Stop. And Gus Stop. promised Amy Stop. he wouldn't sleep with her. And they pinky swore. And he did it anyway. What a <laughs> oh, dick. My Bastard. Oh, my God. How dare this you? This is what I'm not, talking about. I thought you were going to say married at first sight, which oh, is a no, real No, Floribama show. Shore is, uh, my wife and I is like, joy trash reality tv show uh and the one we both enjoy a lot it's so bad but so entertaining <laughs> <laughs> i will say as someone who like has worked in reality tv uh ouch and and <laughs> thanks <laughs> and, Are you about to tell us uh, it's not real <laughs> well okay. i can go on that rant again but i i did find what was super interesting was like seeing behind the scenes the process of like him coming up with a show and like pitching a show and developing a show because i've 
seen that, you know, like I've seen, I've worked on a reality TV show while the director producer were like coming up with a new show idea and like trying to pitch it and everything. And it's like, and they were telling me about like pitching to like discovery and all this shit. And so it was like really interesting to see like the behind the scenes of that. But like, I think my problematic concern from the beginning was like spot on and like weirdly intertwined how like he would have these really fucked up like visions of shooting this woman playing a guitar mm -hmm. and that yeah, inspired this is, a, this is this is specifically show. what I wanted to ask you like like how that landed with you I yeah I think I think it's really I mean I think he's a psychopath right like I don't know how you walk away from this movie not thinking that that dude's well, a fucking psychopath. That's I think the George Clooney's character yeah. pretty much says it. Like, that's the okay. profile. It's like, you fit the profile. He kept telling you, fit the profile. Yeah. And then he lays it out for him. He's like, yeah, you're not it. right. And that, that's why we picked you. I actually wanted to touch on what Ash was saying about enjoying watching the process of him pitching these shows. Uh, a, like, just real quick, just trying to, like, get this out of my head. Uh, this was far funnier than I remember. And um, uh, and I had said in the first part that I was like, I don't remember it being the funniest thing I've ever seen. This was hilarious. Uh, but I, 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 uh, tr it triggered a memory of me watching it with the moms and like why I might have blocked out the humor. Like I, I grew up around the industry uh, and um, I forgot how much of a douche the main character is. And like, and like, I think, well, first of all, I'm going to bet that this is definitely not true unless this is some long game ploy decoy head game <laughs> trick that like, we're just going to go so extravagant with the assassination. No one will believe it, but there might've been something else in recovery. Anyway, but I think like the, the, the interesting thing is like, there's the front side of, you know, um, you know, entertainment business that the audience sees that's fun and ha ha. And, you know, the, the dream of the life of like people that come to like LA to like be a part of where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I'm like flashing around. And I'm this like, you know, I'm, I'm making it, I'm making it big, I, you know? And then there's the dark side, which is the business. And I feel that there's like mm. a, a big allegory going on with the assassin, side of him that that's the business side of hollywood and so i'm gonna bet that this is not true yeah yeah what Unless if it was just a metaphor for the business yeah. side and he he thought he was making like really clever social commentary and everyone took him seriously yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh and then he just like being a brilliant game show marketer played it off really well you know like mm -hmm. <laughs> to sell the story but like you know there's that line when they killed his babies He's like, don't they have any humanity or whatever? Meanwhile, he's like murdering people as an assassin, you know? So yeah. it's, 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 I, I, I really think that that assassin life of him is, is kind of like a, like you said, a big metaphor for the, the business side of the entertainment industry. He's, he's a man, say, yeah. he's a man that is desperate to make a mark and to yeah. be taken seriously or at least yeah. to, to have, attention paid to him yeah like he really right. craves the spotlight and yeah. so both as a character in the movie and as you know chuck barris in reality you know writing this autobiography i i i totally see it and you know and also like you know he's got that creative spark clearly as as the character to to do something fucking weird like write this book <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you know he's he's yeah you he there's one thing you can't box. say about him you know he's he's the guy that thinks outside the box mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you know i think you also in the beginning todd you said how like it's very dreamlike like there's a lot of like film like shot choices and filmmaking choices that make it feel really dreamlike like the split, the way they did the split screen phone call, where you thought it it's was a, a split highly screen. directed that film. Was, that yeah. was a very fun shot. That was so one in cool. Yeah. And then, like, the oneers, uh, like, specifically the NBC page one was like really, yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And then right, that I, sets thought, you up. I thought Drew Barrymore wasn't real until the uh, Julia Roberts said, Hi, Penny. 
But the I the entire up until that point in the film, I was like, this chick is a figment of his imagination. This <laughs> oh, is no the one perfect else, like, dream with her. girl. Right. Nobody oh, else ever is in the same scene with them together. They're always by themselves. And then the conversation with Julia Roberts, she never looks at her until the very end. She says hi, Penny, and then leaves. But like up until that point, you could totally assume that this is a fake, like, figment of his imagination. I mean, Ash. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> what I want to talk about, too, is that there's uh, there's no scenes uh, without Barris in the film. I, I don't know if there's a word for this, but, like, it's, mm. um, like, no characters ever interact outside of his line of sight. Every yeah, scene so it's is when with you're, you're only seeing it through the hero's eyes, and you're not, you're never like cut away to the villains, you know. <laughs> and all, and and almost every scene is with just him and one other person, which which gives you like you can like start getting into these things. Like I didn't, I never thought of the idea that Penny wasn't real, but I love that. I yeah. I really I really yeah, enjoyed that was wondering. Great. If the CIA people weren't real, because right. again, like well, he never it, gets. It makes everything. You question everything, right? Like when you're like, well, wait a minute, what's real and what is it? You know? Right. Yeah. He's never, there's never a scene where him and George Clooney and another person are together. There's mm-hmm. never a scene where, Ju- well, right. except the one you just mentioned, Ex- the brush pat with, I was going to say with Julia Roberts, except the one you just mentioned where Penny, like, you know, brushes past through that. And as far as the spy people, there's only one scene, and that's when he's in the car with, uh, I guess, George Clooney's boss or whatever. And, right. You know, mm-hmm. with the microfilm, you want it, you can reach up my ass. <laughs> but if you and they they did a couple of things with like the the dream feel of it with uh, a little bit. I was kind of like your your final cut is showing uh, because they did like some really heavy color grading on the Hollywood oh, yeah. scenes where like the reds were like super red. Uh, but then like when he switched over to the, the murdering. I think those were real documentary. Those were real interviews. Were they? I think those were real interviews. And anytime yeah. we saw a shot of the show on a TV and it was black and white, that was real footage of yeah. the real show. Oh, yeah. Like that was the real, Correct. yeah, from the new. No, I, new but I think those whatever. interviews were real interviews, but too. I was, I was thinking they about were. like the like the color throughout the film. Like his, it, I feel mm-hmm. like they put the, uh, um, I see what, what you're they saying. call the next gen filter on his murder stuff. Like it didn't have that right. fantasy color grading. So it was like almost like mm-hmm. his Hollywood adventures were fake and the murder was re- the only real part. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> the other way around. You were going to say something, Sam. What were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to say that um, th- I think both of the uh, ladies were not real. Mm. Right? Because they're like his high uh, fantasy of what a woman should be, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, especially Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts is just drenched in uh, noir mystique. Yeah. yeah. She, so she's her ever changing first- hair. Yeah, yeah. And oh, especially right. with that first scene with her, it was very noir, you know. Uh and, and I think I think you hit something there where it's it's like they're probably just especially since this is a Kaufman script and he's always dealing with like the writer or the male fantasy. I think I think you hit something there with that. <gasps> because, like I don't okay. okay, okay, okay. So Sam, I love it. So both women are not real, which further like pulls this like delusion that the spy cop thing isn't real but the scene with the swimming pool and george clooney and Which i, I was like Bleeding to death yeah Which I, I, I was like he shot him but we didn't see it but he shot him the because, fact like, we didn't see it is was something i always really loved i think when david and i watched it just now actually his i think david had a theory that like George Clooney was already dead and dying. So that's what I that's think what I you thought. were supposed to think. But yeah. then they cut to that like wide shot at the end and there's like a lot of blood and not just a little. Like we cut from like just a little bit to all of a sudden like the pool is well, full of blood and he's holding the gun pointed right at him. And it makes you think like this dude's so delusional that he's like rewriting like things in his head. And I think he didn't want to deal with the fact that he actually was the one that killed him. And because why wouldn't George Clooney tell him who killed him? 
Why wouldn't that be the first thing that George, came out of his know, mouth? No, no, he George Clooney doesn't know because he, I'm going to counter that and saying I think it's cool. Okay. I think it's a cool theory, but for two things, one is Julia Roberts. I think you're cool, but you're wrong. <laughs> <let's> <laughs> no, 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 I think it is a cool theory. You can be I'm cool actually, or right. Is, you can't a lot be of stuff I'm approaching it. it, it I want to go get all this. Like, let's get fucking weird and wild and and, and psychoanalyze uh-huh. it. I kind of want to have a mini decide discussion of this as a straight spy thriller. And how do if you liked it like that? We'll get there. But I want to make sure everyone covers whatever points they want. But that scene, because I enjoyed that. I liked that scene a lot. Okay. Um, And I like your theory. But two things. One is later, Julie Roberts admits, she says she contracted that one out for Bird. He's Bird. So it wasn't Julie Roberts. She had had someone else, a third party kill Clooney. And I love his line. It's just, I, I really love the line where... When he's like, "How do I know you're not the mole?" and he goes, "You're a smart boy. You'll figure it out." And then, yeah. and then, then, then it reveals he's bleeding. It's like, like, mm-hmm. how do I know you're not the mole? It's like, because I'm here bleeding to death. That's how you know I'm not the mole. Uh, right. It was how I took that. Yeah. Got that, it. That was okay. that was rough. That you know I, that line was uh, that, that like hit so hard because you get the line and then you see him dying. It was like, mm-hmm. oh my god. Uh, but, so he he had already been shot or stabbed or whatever, and and he's he he's got his like, period. Oh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly though, a little Sorry. bit of blood and water. Is that really not, how it works? Does it really, leak down your listen, pant Listen, it's leg? like fucking Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Rushmore? Ah, that's the wrong. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, wrong. I didn't wrong know mountain. Mount wrong mountain. Bulky. I think you're well, thinking no, Vesuvius. Not true. There's uh, multiple heads. The Lincoln Park gets <laughs> nosebleeds all the time. Little known yeah. fact about yeah. Ra- Mount Rushmore: the Lincoln gets nosebleeds all the time. It's just really dry. Is that true? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Ash, Sam, I, I did do it. think I that is a very the interesting to periods. <laughs> Sorry. A lot can uh, happen in 30 seconds. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah. we, we came to the conclusion that George Clooney's heavy flow is what killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to fill you in. But uh, finally, um, finally, we've had the ultimate feminist discussion on the podcast. <laughs> I, I don't know Certainly, if there can be no conversation feminist. more feminist. Yeah. One of my favorite podcasts is uh, the Bechdel cast where they talk about, like, they specifically talk about the role of women in movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would love to hear their take on this one, especially in regards to the Penny character, because <sighs> she's simultaneously uh, really ditzy. And, you know, they they constantly hammer on this joke of her mispronouncing words, uh, which is mm. always a joke that I love. Like, you know, in female or male characters, I especially like it with mafia guys. Any movie where, like, you know, a mafia guy, like, thinks he, like, kind of is is a little more educated than he really is. Uh, you know, well, that's she, like most she has, mafia movies then. <laughs> she has that, that kind of feel. Uh, but simultaneously, she's very, I mean, she's very wise and, and she's, like, the person that he should be, like, listening to. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah, string I mean, that's it's a, string away mm-hmm. from Penny. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Feminist thoughts on that? Anybody? Oh, that's she's the Charlie horrible. Kaufman woman. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. That's it's. He does it's, not write women well. Women are beautiful sex objects for his men in his movies, and I think he's a sexist prick. <laughs> well, it's either <laughs> they either exist as just a sex object or like strictly there to be the tool by which he recognizes his errors like they don't have mm-hmm. agency they were both yeah so that's, yeah. that's julia roberts and drew barrymore drew yep. barrymore is like the 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 dream like you know uh stable housewife and then julia roberts is the mystique you know fantasy you know like no that's a good point like uh mm-hmm. and, and kaufman is known for a lot of, especially if you've ever seen synecdoche new york where Mm-mm. it's just like all the women are just there and it's just the writer's mind in his own little universe, you know, and, and women are just there either to support him or be his like, you know, spicy delight, you know, like, uh, yeah. Did I, you yeah. watch, uh, yeah, Anomalisa? that's on my resume actually spicy <laughs> delight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey. As Anomalisa was exactly the same way though. 
Oh like, no, really? But like literally, because oh, no. the, the plot of Anomalisa is, uh, it's you know, angsty white older dude, uh, like puppet, <laughs> and every other puppet in the Clay. movie has the same face. Except right. for the woman he meets that's, like, you know, the object of his desire mm-hmm. or whatever. Oh, that's uh, fucking... And then you so, get that, so and then you fucking get that, literal. <laughs> wow. And then you get that really creepy uh, claymation sex scene. It was really uncomfortable. What? So, so yeah. disturbing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that's Ooh. what I like about Kaufman. You know, like, we, we made the uh, John Malkovich thing about feeling icky, and I was like... That's what I liked about it. Like, I like, ha- like, because, you know, most films are like, oh, it's action porn or it's uh, feel good porn or it's romance porn or it's horror porn. Like, I like when I get a You watch film- a lot of porn, huh? <laughs> 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 but, but, like, you know, it's like, I, li- I like when a film will give us an emotion that we normally don't get that isn't distracting us from the everyday life. So that's mm-hmm. what I like about Kaufman, despite his uh, treatment of his female characters. Yeah, I'm not going like, to say that like Kaufman makes th- just the same movie over and over Coffin. again, but because uh, <laughs> th- that's I feel like that's a little reductive of what what it is. But I'm pretty sure it's like um, like when we worked at the museum and you'd see uh, who was that one guy who did the Highway series, and it was just like 600 paintings of a highway. Uh, that would be Kuntz. Kuntz. Roger Kuntz. Yeah, Roger Kuntz. And it was just like, you know, it, it's not that he's just writing the story about a guy who makes the mistakes throughout the entire movie and never does anything redeeming and doing that over and over again for his whole career because he can't do anything else. I think he's looking for the perfect way to tell that story. Uh, mm. And I don't know if he's gotten there yet. I think that's well said. I Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, I think you're right. I think... Uh, well, I haven't seen Schenectady yet. Uh, well, Schenectady but I've, but I've is the name of things. the city in New York, but it's called Schenectady because that's like a literary yep. uh, oh. mechanic. And it, sorry it, to nerd out on that because I, I actually really <laughs> love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd say Eternal Sunshine is that. I feel that's, like Eternal, yeah, Eternal Sunshine, Sunshine is 100% was- that. It's, it's not about his career, though. It's Eternal Sunshine is about. I didn't say career. Uh, it's his his. Oh, I mis- thought you said career. Sorry, I thought no, no, I thought you said a man like making mistakes in his career. No, he said he's made his career out of trying to tell the same story oh. in a perfect way. Yeah. Oh, I and see. Eternal okay. Sunshine was basically you know another. Sh- it's it's this movie. It's uh, Anomalisa. It's you know the the story with an obvious answer if only the main character wasn't such a fucking dildo you know like. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> do do you guys do you guys mind if I, I steer away from the 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 writing and and the story a bit on and i'm i've been really curious what you guys feeling about Clooney's directing here is because it's strong handed it's like heavy you, that's it's very heavy. It's like the glove does not fit kind of heavy. Like it's just a big old hand. <laughs> I like I personally I really like a heavy-handed director. I really like heavily stylized stuff. I'm a big Me Verhoeven too. fan. I'm a big Terry Gilliam fan. I like a movie where if I can watch 5 seconds of it and I can name that director. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, but I know a lot of people especially a lot of critics I listen to, uh, you know, are, you know, kind of critical of that and and really respond more to like more naturalistic kind of stuff. But where do you guys land on this? Like, because this is a heavy handed di- director. He is he is not wasting any time uh, like managing and finessing every every single shot. Um, I have <laughs> thoughts, but if, Ash, you're, if you want to start it, I don't know. Uh, I... I- I too am like a uh, a fan of heavy handed directors like like I'm an I, again I I also like you know like Wes Anderson I love I love being yes. like yes I know that this is a Wes Anderson movie or I know within this five is seconds an, yeah or I know this is an Edgar Wright movie like those are two of my favorites um and I liked honestly I will say from the point of view of being a director myself. I am very impressed that this is his first film. 
Because there are some extremely advanced, like, camera moves and concepts and visual things that he pulled off that I would not expect to see in a first feature film that I was very impressed with. Like I said, like, the split screen effect was very fucking cool. Uh, There's Mm -hmm. a lot of, like, just, like, camera angles and lighting choices and set choices and where people are, like, positioned in frames that are very interesting uh, and very cool. And it helps to make the film feel, like, surreal, which I think is really cool. But there were, like, also really weird choices, like, the text that came up that was like, this film is blah, 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 blah. And I was like, what? We didn't need this. You know, like, uh, <laughs> as I was I was in. Or like, Brett, like what you said, like there's weird color correction choices. Like, I don't know why the so, interview footage is I, so blown out. That or the, yeah, the reds and the Hollywood shots or, mm-hmm. uh, I th- but that one is a, I, I'm certain if we wanted to go on a hunt f- uh, about that for the for time facts, period, it's a time period because this mm-hmm. was uh, this was Final Cut is new. Remember, like, <laughs> yes. uh, and digital color grading is new, and people really wanted to be like, and they like, what if we just push the colors? Yeah, you yeah. Know? What if we crush those blacks and the like early two thousands look of for sure? And I get that, like, I think he was trying to be like. You know, maybe the point of making the documentary interview footage look so extreme and unrealistic was to point out the fact that this dude's real life wasn't realistic. Like, the real footage doesn't look real. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's I, interesting. I got the feeling watching it, it was, like, his attempt to, uh, especially with the with the uh, preface about the Coen brothers, uh, mm-hmm. that he was trying to emulate all of the cool stuff he had seen recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, because <laughs> yeah. that was yep. definitely yep. trying to be the Coen brothers fucking, like, nutso in the butso color grading on Oh, oh Brother. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know what the fuck totally I totally call agree. it. Record scratch. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a new, that's a new one. That- <laughs> Case, where's the shirt? Nutso in the butso. Um... But then also, like, I could not get out of my mind that he just really wanted this movie to be Fight Club uh, with the way that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Nailed it. The hair, the the leather jacket, the, you know, there's that whole, th- there was a whole part of the movie where it's just like, oh, this is just Tyler Durden, right? Like, this is what we're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. Which, but also plays into, you know, th- uh, if you want to talk about the uh, visual dictionary, right? Like we had just recently learned that people dressed like that might not be real, uh, and this is a movie yeah. that has stories that maybe aren't real. Uh, but you know, like planting yeah, the, those. Seeds. I mean, some of the some of the costuming choices. I mean, not to go all the way back to the Julia Roberts thing, but some of the costuming choices in his later period where he's feeling super confident. I mean. Did you guys ever like think about layering this like overall story structure over a like a Scorsese movie? Because it kind of maps. Mm. Um, well, I think with, Todd, with, you with, said with, it right without the humor. There. <laughs> yeah, and Todd, I think you said that like within twenty minutes of the film, you're like, "This is a Scorsese film." Well, yeah, the yeah. Humor. By the time you know he's he's you know coming out of nowhere on its way up and we already know we're going to see his fall and all it's missing to be a Scorsese movie is like remove all the jokes and add a lot of cocaine. Boom. Yeah. Scorsese. <laughs> I yeah. got gotcha. I get that. Um I had let's see one other one other directorial thought I had uh and I want to ask uh I mean anybody it, it, for input but Ash cuz you're you're the actual director uh f- I'm it's, a real boy. It's a thing. <laughs> uh, I don't want to pass group group judgment because uh, it's a thing I did not like, but I they totally did it on purpose. And I want to know what you thought about that. Like 90% of the shots in this movie had one point perspective. It was just straight on like the horizon. The horizon line was like everything was straight. like straight back. Uh, mm. it, it was like almost like he was trying to do a Wes Anderson stuff, but he wasn't framing it all yeah. cute oh, like Wes. Oh, there's no, there's no elevation like to this, it. This movie was two no dimen- there was two dimensions in this mm. movie. It was, you know, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I I could see that being 
an actual because I kind of noticed that too. That's what I meant, like like the placement and like then the frame. Like he was definitely going for a really flat uh look. Uh very flat. Um like the shot in the boardroom down the table yeah. is like very flat and like I could see that actually him trying to mimic what these TV sets felt like. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, because you have the dating show and it's like literally just like a wood flat <laughs> that's been decorated <laughs> with like hippie flowers behind them. And everything back then was shot very flat for TV, right? Like, you know, you because you had to be, you you had a set and you actually had an audience and you had to have the cameras. So it was very like had home theater-like. viewers with a TV screen that was only well, actually, eight inches though, wide. Actually though, <laughs> mm-hmm. actually though, like at uh when he's really cracking up mm-hmm. uh at the end of the movie, uh we do start playing with elevation, don't we? Yes. Yeah. A, a bit. It's it's still pretty pretty like not necessarily elevation you're thinking like flat is like you see how well this is terrible for the listeners but see how behind me there's just like a flat (laughs) wall so flat is very like i will describe what i'm seeing on your camera for the audience (laughs) a cute dog laying there um (laughs) like like wes anderson is a very flat uh (laughs) flat uh style where everything is like against a wall and the horizon line is straight and everything it's a, it's versus... A peanuts, it's a Peanuts cartoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Versus, like, having depth in a scene. Yeah, absolutely, like, like full-on uh, newspaper comics. Like, yeah. absolutely flat-on two dimensions. There is no other dimension. Don't even think about it. In, in a world where rooms don't have corners. <laughs> well, like, I, got, right? <laughs> I mean, TV studio, I think, makes more sense, but... I remember thinking watching it in a lot of scenes. I got very big, like, play vibes, mm-hmm. like stage play. Yeah. Because if you think about it, like, again, TV back then, you know, mm-hmm. was very right. stage play kind of yeah, I, kind I of love, setup. Yeah, I, I love that insight. I do. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's, you know, where he was coming from. It's also classically an amateur director thing to do, too. <laughs> uh, so his first that. time. Well, well, what were you saying <laughs> yeah. about the end scene? And uh, you were trying to describe elevation to us. What, like, what were your thoughts on that end shot? Oh, like the ending when he's sort of like, well, I was thinking falling the, apart. Yeah, yeah. Like it's still kind of flat, right? Like it's just the backdrop is changing on him, right? So mm-hmm. they keep moving in these different backdrops that are like representing different like times of his childhood and life and everything. But like the angle itself is still very flat versus having something where you see depth. So you have like more of an angle and you're seeing like depth into this the the background or whatever. Everything was like still really flat. It was just changing these backdrops and we were seeing into his childhood kind of thing, um, which was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's not like elevation, like as far as like something being high or low or whatever. It's more like, um, you know, there's not a lot of depth in the scene because everything feels like like a 2D, you know, it can feel like a 2D drawing because yeah, there's no depth. And thinking about or like an art school thing, it's, it is it <laughs> is the concept of multiple points of perspective where yes, uh, it's... Yeah. It's hard to describe very quickly, but like, like if you stand in the middle of a road and you look down a road, you have uh-huh. these like vanishing lines, right? So everything comes road. to a point in the distance, going one out single into the point. distance. But a flat shot, like what you're seeing behind me right now, with just a wall, there's no vanishing lines. It's just there's just a flat surface behind me so that's the flat sort of shot oh mm-hmm. or thank static you, thank you. is another another term because i really don't understand shots or framing right yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a storyboard artist uh by or used to be by trade uh i can i can walk dave through it but not on this podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's, well even for the square, listener square you versus know. cube kind if you, that's easy enough right like yeah yeah right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Basically, the and horizon just, line is parallel with the camera, right? And not yeah. perpendicular. Oh. Not perpendicular. So whenever 
like it changes to intersect with the camera, then you get more depth. But yeah, this movie had a lot of those long hallway shots or like when they're out in the mm-hmm. streets in Berlin and it, he's going to murder the dude. But it's just like straight down the street and straight mm-hmm. down uh-huh. the boardroom. And uh, but it wasn't s- super consistent because there were shots with different angles. Uh, so that's it. It was jarring whenever there was something different. See, uh, I don't know. I, I, I still think I'm on to something where when he's seriously cracking up on stage, I think that's that's the first and only time that the camera is placed uh, very highly above him. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that that it's it's looking down da- like for the first time uh, we get some shots where the camera is looking down on him instead of just seeing what he sees. Right. You know, oh, a, I see what you're saying. So you're talking plane. more about perspective. The part, uh, you know, the part where he starts going nuts and, yeah, and yeah. says like, I see you. I see you up there, up there, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> judging me, blah, blah, blah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's think, like the full film has been shot as his, at his eye level because right, we are. Except for that part. Right. Because we are, we are on the same page as him he is we believe in him and then as he's starting to lose his sanity then we're not at his eye level like you said and and we're literally looking down upon him yeah just like his mother in you know is in the black Mm -hmm. and white footage looking down on the small child because you know that that's like the metaphor that they're making for sure oh oh can we go there too like i could (laughs) i could have done without that (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that was problematic. It was just inserted in I, I, and, like, I, not I woven I into the it. story at all. And it, like, felt that like... That was a common thing, the whole thing. Everything about his back, about, like, his childhood that was fucked up, that was not in the book. That was coffee. Oh, um, interesting. I literally said that! Him. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's most likely that, like, uh, the Kaufman version of the film... Was going to be like, you know, 90% staring down into the cradle <laughs> and singing happy birthday with a creepy veil over yourself. And then flash forward, you're in a cheap hotel asking a prostitute to pretend that you're there, your mommy. I do. I will say, though, I do feel like that was weaved into the story, though, because they talked about they talked about how he killed his twin that was supposed to be a girl. But that it was all, was all of late. that info information. All of those things were presented to us at the same time in the same scene and never mentioned again. I mean, it wasn't the same scene because it was it, mentioned it was in, in the pool scene, and then we right. cut to the him going yeah. crazy yeah. scene, and then we saw the birthday but scene. But the pool scene so it was yeah. way mm. over halfway through the movie, so it's not definitely. Like, yeah, it wasn't like set up. Yeah. yeah, I did. Well, I did appreciate that the uh, the weird prostitute part of it was given to us before and then you know we had to wait like another 25 minutes to say like you know to figure out like what the fuck was that about uh, Wait, I what would not, prostitute? I, I don't even remember Did this. I skim I, over this? Yeah, yeah okay. I don't even remember Glad. that scene. He hired a prostitute to sing happy birthday for him with the veil. And I then thought later that was we, Penny. No, it was, no, was no, it wasn't. That was it was a Penny. prostitute. They immediately, okay. right after that, they immediately flash to Penny. But no, it's 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 definitely a prostitute. Oh. Um, but yeah. You know, that he hired to, like, act out. You know, that's why she says, uh, you know, did I do it right? And then they immediately <laughs> flash to Penny. We have no idea what the fuck was that. Uh, it's only yeah, 20 weird. minutes later that we see, uh, you know, his flashbacks with his mother enacting that oh. ritual so those towards the end i don't I like block i don't even remember that yeah. it's just it's a whole problematic thing like i don't know if you guys uh you guys like Lindsay ellis you ever watch those videos uh they she did one recently that was like completely debunking the ed gein uh like mommy issues serial killer thing uh and it's just like it's <sighs> be if whole, wholly invented that you know the the mommy issues gender confusion thing it leads to serial killers uh, and it's it was invented for uh like shock media psycho. and newspapers and wasn't psycho. it psycho it wasn't yeah. even psycho though it was like oh. the, it was psycho got it from apparently a newspaper who wrote just made it up uh, about these murders uh, before there was any investigation done. It was like the next day newspaper of like, we found all these murders mm-hmm. and it turns out Ed Gein's uh, like a sexual weirdo. And like, but it, you know, those, those weren't based on any facts. Sexual weirdo. Uh, but n- 
listeners, go check out the uh, the Lindsay Ellis thing on uh, on it's, was it? it was basically it was there. It it was the the thesis of her video was that they use transphobia as a murder as a motive for being a murder. Yeah, but they bring this up a lot in Mindhunter. I don't know if you've watched the. Uh, the the uh even Ed Kemper had those same issues. I mean it's not it's not like a always type of thing. It it's just frequent. Okay. Well I don't I don't I don't know about the mother gender identity thing and, and I haven't looked into it for a long time, but the last time I checked, which was a long time ago, uh if you if you do look at serial killers, you can you can always find sexual repression is part of their um you know, their their profile. I forgot where we're at with this because we had so we're many talking like we had about five conversations Clooney's going directing. at once. Well, my short my short answer to that question is honestly, it depends. Like, it depends. I think it's like um, a sauce you'd put on food. If I like the sauce, fucking slather that on, baby. Um, if I don't like the sauce, <laughs> no, thank you. It, it's like for me, if it's a director whose aesthetic I like, yes, please drench your movie in that aesthetic that I like. Like, so I like 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 Ashy, like I like Wes Anderson. Um, Taika Waititi is my favorite director, but he, I feel like he doesn't have a strong. I mean, he's got like a strong hand in he, that he, he he's, a, everything he does is good, but it's not. Yeah. It's not quite as. It's not a he, visual style. Personal. It's a ri- written style. I would say. Thank yeah, you. Exactly. But, it's exactly. But the what visual I was style, say. like I said, if if I if I like it, or or like yeah, Edgar Wright, like the Cornetto trilogy, like with Simon Pegg, like that. There's there is a very strong visual style to those. So again, if it's something that I like. And I'm trying to think, I feel like I should juxtapose this with one that I don't like, and I'm kind of coming up empty. I, I feel like I'm either ambivalent or like... Well, it. Scorsese. Uh, do, 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 Scorsese's do you like Verhoeven? One. Or Scorsese? Or, uh, um, uh, God damn it, Reservoir Dogs guy. Quentin. 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 I'm like, meh. I'm like, I like, I like some of the movies they do. I don't, you know, there's certain things. Um... Like another one I like, I, I like like uh, Guy Ritchie's style. Like I, I recently tweeted, I guess. Oh some, uh, yeah, oh yeah. I watched. I recently watched that King Arthur movie he did that didn't wasn't greatly received, and I, I liked it. I thought it was that. super fucking fun. Wait, I forgot he did that. <laughs> he, I yes, didn't it's know on. This. You should, and I, I I recommend it. It's literally like if Snatch was King Arthur movie was a fantasy King Arthur. Wait, movie. is that the <laughs> one? Oh, with, sign me up. Sign me up. With I'm Keira downloading Knightley? now. No, that was a different one. No, I it's think. Charlie oh, Hunnam. Okay. Yeah, Charlie Hunnam, uh, the guy who's in Sons of Anarchy, and um, oh, this is a newer people. one. Jude Law is in right? it. Eric Bana is in it. Um, oh, okay. Oh wow. Jaimon Hansu's in it. Um, but this film. <laughs> no, sorry. No, but, but yeah, this film I enjoyed it, and I kind of want to have a discussion because I feel like we've gotten super like deep and like psychoanalyzing and like the very like ethereal of it as a straightforward spy like thriller. Was it enjoyable? Do we like it? This question is a final wrap up question. Pat, are we going there? I mean, I'm okay yeah. with that. Unless, like, Unless. Dave or anyone, it, raise your hands if you had any burning questions well, I, you need I have, to talk I have, about before I, we land this plane. I've really won, and this plays into what Pat's saying. This is a spy thriller. Uh, Todd and I kind of had a difference of opinion on targeting. So we could, I, I, I wanted to talk about that. Okay. At the beginning yeah, of, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, real quick, just real quick, mm-hmm. real quick. Uh, so, um, uh, George Clooney, you know, like when you're targeting assets, you know, uh, like you're looking for a specific profile, and this plays into what we've just been talking about profiling. Um, like Todd said, he didn't really feel the profile at the beginning. Um, I, I kind of saw it. It just wasn't executed well in the film, just from spy films that we've watched, you know, but, uh, you know, and please jump in anybody on this. What do you mean um, by profile? No, that's all right. That's all right. This is I'm a, this really is sure. a pure spy geek thing. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, like, like this is the kind of thing we talk more about on our show than maybe on yours. But, uh, I would, I would say, uh, the targeting of, I mean, because, you know, we go through a lot of spy movies and, you know, the recruitment process is kind of important to us. Like, who do you, like, maybe recruit, bring into the fold as an asset? Mm -hmm. Um, I did not see any good reason for George Clooney's character to uh, latch on to this person 
hundred percent at the beginning. 100%. I give it minus what we would call it is minus five points on our show. <laughs> But David yeah. has a slightly different opinion. Okay. Um, uh, I don't think it was executed well, so I'm on Todd's side. But, like, thinking of, and this goes back to, like, what we've discussed as far as writing and, like, what, you know, you know the, the character is, like, this super absorbed, self-absorbed, like, you know, just I'm moving on my impulse type of thing. You know, uh, and especially when we get more information on his file later on, I think he was well targeted, um, but we didn't actually get to watch the recruitment process. So that's kind of why I'm on Todd's side. But I, I, I really wanted to discuss that because that's really the whole story is this mm-hmm. character. And this is I'm, I'm really trying to play on Pat here that this is a spy thriller, like a straightforward spy thriller. There's a guy that is into himself that is just trying to get a lot of attention. I'm going to show up and be like, hey, why don't you kill people for money? I know you don't want the money, but we're still going to pay you. You're going to love it. you know. And I think based on that character's profile, quote unquote, you know, and again, we didn't get a lot of it, but um, I, I think it was a good target, uh, but... Um, but the I, but the CIA had no reason to know he was a good target. Well, okay. Well, so he killed like, his unborn twin. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Well, and I think it's it's not so much the uh, he because he wasn't. I mean, he was self absorbed, but it was more than that. And like the theme that they got real writery into throughout the movie was less self absorption and more just the uh, the need to be special because that's why mm-hmm. it wasn't right. about the money. It mm-hmm. was like my life sucks that's what and the like whole, I can be a spy the need now. To be special, I'll kill anyone you want. It, yeah, the need the need to be special is what the whole movie is about. And, yeah. and 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 how it becomes toxic to his uh, relationships and to his own personality. Well, Pat, the need to be special ahead. and the willingness and the capability to do whatever it takes to get there. Like lying and say you putting the head, the CEO of the fucking studio as your reference for your management training application. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you guys are right. Like it, the approach was a little weak. Like George Clooney is just like, you look like you'd kill someone for my approval. And also, I like the way you <laughs> masturbate, son. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's because. Also, yeah. I heard your dick tastes like strawberry. <laughs> yeah. That's because the whole spy thing is imaginatory. And, like, yep. even at the, it really at, is. At the it really end, is. Uh, Julia Roberts' character it literally says it. Like, it sh- it's her line. She says, like, men never imagine that they're the guy next door, the insurance broker. They always imagine they're fantastical things. Like, it's literally spelled out in the directing that this is all an alternate reality and not (laughs) actually happening because he's just living in his own mind, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you think, so do you you think um, that this is a Kate, like a total recall or an American psycho Kind of totally. situation? Uh, uh, maybe American Psycho. I, it kind of feels like, you know, the movie A Beautiful Mind? It, yes. It mm. feels a little bit like he was trying to do that. But I don't instead know, of but being, not... like, really smart with numbers and yeah. shit, he just makes up game shows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I do not like the Total Recall reference there. Arnold did all those things. He saved Mars. That is... Stop it. It is although, not I, although, although I guess both of those Don't he, you dare besmirch him. This guy yeah. this guy and the beautiful mind theory. are both working on game theory, right? Yeah. So remember, you know, at the end of the day. Oh uh, sure. Brett, go away. Pat, I'm Did sorry. You 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 canceled, it? Brett. Did I mention go in the Arn- court. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a, a a candidate on the dating game. I don't I don't remember if we caught that on the recording. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He was. He was, yeah. and it was like really awkward or funny and weird because he didn't get a lot of uh like terms like he didn't understand what fooling around was or something Aww, like. That's adorable. <laughs> also, Michael Jackson. <laughs> wow! Wow! Goodness! Candidate on the dating. Is game. this like before they were famous or? 
like I think they newly were famous. famous. I think or newly yeah. Fam- okay. Bachelor number one. If I took you out on a date, what would we do? And he's like, I would uh, eliminate all your enemies uh, and like crush your children and listen to the lamentations of your women. <laughs> yeah, because that's what's best in life. Um, but uh, just want to throw out a fun thing. I thought, kind of a weird, dark Easter egg joke. Uh, when he's doing his CIA training, and there's a real brief uh-huh. shot scan across of some... Ba- there's two ca- trainees there with the last names Ruby and Oswald. And then when he leaves, he says, bye, Jack, as in Jack Ruby. Oh, good. Bye, no. Lee, as in Lee Harvey Oswald. Wow. No. Wow. Nice catch. That's Ugh. funny. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> but isn't, that's like, <laughs> that's like the leading alt theory though, right? Yeah. Like it's the most exact, likely thing to be true. That's why I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Okay, so where, let's. Where are we going? Let's land this plane. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts, because this baby's gonna wake up. Yes, soon. It's, it, it, it <laughs> landed now, or we crash and die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear what he has to say. First movie. What'd you think, bud? <laughs> he fell asleep. I can't Aww. get him to respond. Oh, oh is <gasps> this, no! Is this baby's first recording? Yeah. It is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he loves it. He loves the movie. He thought and, he thought that it, the directing was a little over over, <laughs> uh, but he liked the performances. <laughs> the deep and, version and, of heavy handed, and, <laughs> and he wants to know who this Rutger Hauer is. <laughs> he wants to know more. Okay, Rutger Hauer was like the best part of this movie. <laughs> yeah. He was good. He was good. I I was I was dissatisfied in how much like he actually showed up because my expectations from my like memories were like you know oh my god. We get to see, you know, older, mature Rutger Hauer do some shit. Uh, but yeah, I I liked what he brought. Uh, it I just I in my mind there was more of it, and I was a little mm. disappointed. Yeah, uh, when I watched it just now. All right, Sam, go for it. Um, yeah, didn't care for this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, what about as a spy as a spy movie and then get into your overall <laughs> I didn't feel like it was very spy there was no like cool intrigue no like tracking down people the most spy thing was trying to find out who the mole was and they didn't even make it a plot point it just kind of reveals itself at the end um, and there's right. only... or the microfilm up the ass. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that sure. Yes, great. Let's make the only spy thing some weird sexual reference. Thanks, Charlie Kaufman. Um, okay. And then did you like did you like the end scene though with Julia Roberts yeah, with the with, with the, the tea, lazy Susan? But that was like the only spy thing, and like swapping the tea is like okay, cool. But like I, I wouldn't if you if that if I didn't know we were doing it because it was a spy film, I would never categorize this as a spy film in my mind. Um it's it's certainly mm-hmm. weird, but that right. could just be because like I decided in my own mind at the end that the spy stuff was made up, so therefore it's not about him actually being a spy. So I mean that's that's my take on it being a spy movie as a movie overall. The directing was heavy handed, but I agree with Ash. Like it's pretty good for his first directorial debut. Um, I typically really like George Clooney. Um, I can't. He didn't direct Descendants, right? Or did he? I don't know. I think it was the Dean from Community, but I want to say he. Oh, well, he wrote that. He wrote Jim it Rash? though. Jim Rash uh, wrote yeah, it. Yeah, Jim okay. Rash and then, wrote it. I don't know if George he... Oh, Clooney my heard. God. I did not know that. Yeah. Yep. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Well, if I... <laughs> Holy shit. I think George Thank Clooney you for directed that. it. No, that but... just made my evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh-huh. I know he, like, grew as a director. So it's cool to see where he started. Um, but I just... I don't care for the story. Um, I don't care for the woe is me, privileged white male succeeding yeah. in Hollywood. My life. Boo-hoo. I'm still so sad. Like, okay, the fucking wank off, please. Uh, <laughs> he didn't direct and, it, by the way. Okay, I just looked didn't. it up. Yeah, Alexander the movie ended. did. 
Gotcha. Okay. The movie ended and Sam's no word review was uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the jerk off motion for yeah. those listening. Yeah. Uh, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm cranky because I haven't slept in three weeks, but uh, my opinion oh. is, is if you as a person only write women this way, which is that they are only there to have sex with the men or be sexy, that that's all you think of women. Because if you thought they were more, you would write them as people. And so therefore, I am not a fan of you, Kaufman. And like, I just don't relate to the character. Um, and... I, I don't know. Which one, the sexy spy or the ditzy Well, you should blonde. not relate admit, to the character at all. Also, I kidding. mean, he's not like a little. If you relate yeah. to the character, the, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> right? Well, but there's supposed to be some sort of, like, appeal, you know, to the character. And I find nothing appealing. And not even, like... Sometimes, you know, they uh, directors will write bad characters and you just like to watch them be punished because they're bad people. And it's not even Scorsese. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even that type of story, you know, like he's never really punished for being a bad person. He just exists as a bad person. And there's nothing redeeming about his character. Because obviously, yeah, we all hated the main character in this movie. But I'm thinking about the uh, Anomalisa, Char- Charlie Kaufman's, I think, second most recent thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And the split down the middle of that one was uh, the praise, almost all of it universally, was from people going like, this is an accurate depiction of life. These are real people with real feelings. And, uh, <laughs> and which I think is the point that he's trying to make when he's writing these terrible stories about about terrible people is he's trying to write them in a way that you will empathize with the person before realizing everything they're doing is wrong and then you realize everything that you're doing is wrong <laughs> mm-hmm. you know like he's trying to write a parable or something but uh hasn't quite landed it yet and this was like way earlier and it this is like you know the the proto you know using someone else's material to try and write you know write his morals into it uh but well that is how i feel about this movie is that it didn't land uh moral wise for sure um but uh did i like it not really uh uh sorry uh but it's you know it's just i think it's also in a genre of films and podcasts and other things in general that i've been actively trying to avoid in my uh personal enjoyment stuff which is uh bad people doing bad things that we're entertained by you know like uh i don't know i thought jack like kanye (laughs) uh i'm thinking like you know uh the 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 genre of like murder podcasts where it's like uh, you know, I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't want to. Like, someone really died so we could be entertained about this, and I'm not about it. Like, I'm not. I'm not learning. I'm not learning anything about like you know my life or useful knowledge from knowing how people were murdered. Uh, and I kind of feel like God. If that's what this is, if it's a true story, like, what is that? What am I supposed to feel about that? You know. So, just right. on a personal yeah. level, I don't really like that. Yeah. See, I feel like it's interesting that you say, like, the moral – I think if you have to look at this movie from the perspective of the spy shit is not real. And and most of his interactions with women I don't think are real either, except for when he's actually, like, grossing them out. <laughs> and yeah. they're like, why did you whip out your dick in the middle of a fucking movie totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, like, that interaction with the woman in the grotto – uh, did you believe that that was real? I did not for a second. I Which thought one? that was his own psyche. The woman who the called woman him that out. swims up and, you and says, gonna, like, you are a him? fucking absolute oh. piece of shit. You are destroying humanity. Like, I didn't believe oh, for a goddamn no, I don't second think that, was that she real was either. real. Because yeah. here's the thing. I think the moral of the film or the point of the film was to point out that this guy wants to be be special and important so bad but he actually isn't 
and that he hasn't even come close. Because at the very end, you know, it's that line of, I have an idea for another show. We'll have three older men on and a gun in front of them. And we'll have them talk about, you know, their lives and talk about how close they came to achieving their dreams. And whoever doesn't blow their brains out is the winner. And that's the actual guy on screen. That's the guy that this movie is about. And so I think that that was the point of the film. The point of the film was he wants to be that, but he he's not. And he hasn't right. come anywhere close to, to achieving his actual dreams a- right. in sort of a Gatsby sense because he's alone and he hasn't actually, like, achieved real love in his life. And also, like, a career sense because – even though he created these game shows, he's also very, like, hated for it. And I think that that also, like, affects him. And that's what that swim-up scene's all about. He just wants to be loved at the root of it. And that's, like, all the weird mother stuff and whatever. And at the end of the day, he's not. And he never achieved it, you know? But yeah. he rejects the only person that truly loves him. I mean, because I don't think she's real. real. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think she's real. Yeah, I think that's why he rejects her because she's not actually physically a human. <laughs> and, and the way you know that the grotto scene was even though real. even though Drew Barrymore national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the way that you know that the grotto scene wasn't real also is if you've ever been to a Hollywood party, uh, no one's in the pool. They're all just thirsty for networking. Especially <laughs> naked. <laughs> right. I will argue that was the Playboy Mansion, and I bet you people are in the pool of the Playboy Mansion. That was the Playboy Mansion? How do you yep, know they that? Because there were Playboy bunnies standing around the pool that weren't in the pool. They were wearing the bunny outfit. See, even the bunnies are just there to network. <laughs> Listen, those girls hustle, man. <laughs> no, that's a different magazine. <laughs> anyway, I, I, long story short, my wrap up is if you look at this movie from the perspective that everyone is fake and it's and he's delusional and he's creating this delusion, you know, um I think it it could have been a very good movie because it could have been very cerebral and interesting. And uh, it just never really, and I think, you know, because maybe because, you know, uh, they didn't want to say one way or another, I think that that's the fault of the film is at the end of the day, it doesn't really make like a super clear statement that it is all in his head. Like, you know, you don't watch Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind and go like, what's in his head and what's not? Like, you get what's in his head and what's not, you know? Uh, so I think that that was – and that – that I'm assuming, since Charlie Kaufman doesn't like this movie, I'm assuming that was changes that George Clooney made that then made that unclear and really blurred the lines. Because uh. I think if it was a little more clear that it was – cerebral and at the end the reveal was like yeah this is all in his head and it was a little more like concrete i think it could have been a good movie but because then then at the end of the day it's like yeah all these women that we've treated so fucking poorly through the whole movie yeah they're not real because this psychopath this is the psychopath's vision of what a woman should be you know that would have made that okay but we never we never quite landed that and so and so it's to me, it, it's not a great film, though there's some really, really interesting directorial choices. The lighting, we didn't even really talk about the lighting. The lighting is fucking beautiful in this movie. And the, um, you know, the cinematography is great. And the set pieces are pretty great, too. But I just think there was some directorial choices and writing choices that are just like we said before, icky. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my review. Icky. <laughs> I, I I would I would like to I would like to jump in and, and follow up on Ash. Um you know, over directed, it's probably true. Like uh like you know, a, a better film might have been a little calmer, a little like throttle it down a little bit. Um the you know the themes of his uh 
inability to get laid. And then suddenly we halfway through the movie, he's got an explosion of pussy opportunities uh, that he manages terribly are, I think like um, uh, what, what, what the film in large part is, is trying to talk about, you know, like, uh, you know, going from, I don't know, it's not it's not from zero to hero it's from it's from in effect it, it's from you know he passes through like the singularity point of being unnoticeable to becoming like a superstar and and just absolutely like trashes his whole fucking life around it if if there's anything valid about this film i i think that's it uh, I'll, 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 I, I, I mentioned this, you know, before, like I, I, I've seen it. I liked it. I'm glad I saw it, but, uh, I don't need to see it again. I definitely don't need to put it on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. It was just weird because there are a lot of things I liked, like elements to it. It's almost like baking a cake and I, I love eggs and I love sugar. And like, like Sam Rockwell is a uh, very talented and he, he started off right at the beginning, his dancing dude loves to dance. He's great at it. Dances every fucking movie he's in. He dances. Um, he's charming. There were moments, there were moments I really liked. Like I really liked the George Clooney pool scene. I liked the end scene with Julia Roberts. I, I liked the, I liked that scene a lot. Um, but then just, the, but then, There'd be like little tiny tidbits here. I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. And then just, it it's like the cake came out of the oven and just didn't hold together. It just kind of fell apart. The souffle you know I mean? like, caved. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel um, you. I feel you. Keep keep it rolling. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, man. It's like, this could have been, I kind of see what you're going. And then I think a lot of it, I'm trying to think if, if I want if I wanted more ambiguity if it's real or not because the problem Ash the one problem with making it clear is we don't know because this is based on a book that is presented as fact that these mm-hmm. things happened. So that doesn't mean as a filmmaker you can't make a definite statement though. True, but then you basically you're calling out the person who wrote your book is like, what a fucking wacko, huh? Can you believe this guy right here? Like, right. Like, so, uh, so maybe, so maybe that was a wrong decision on Clooney's yeah. part to uh, not uh, decide for himself. Yeah, uh, you know, I think as a filmmaker, maybe, you have maybe that to have was a, point a wrong decision on a, as a filmmaker. I, I yeah. mentioned it before as a strong decision. It's a brave decision. But um, maybe it didn't pay out for Pat or for <laughs> yeah, it's some just, of you uh, other guys. I don't know. It was just kind of meh for me. Like, yeah, my review, <laughs> meh. <laughs> meh. Having, having seen what we got and having made that comment at the beginning about, like, it was cool that he didn't make a choice. I, I take it back at this point. I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally on <laughs> team. Yeah, Ash, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Director should have a viewpoint. Yeah. I'm going to counter and say, I think it would have been cooler to make it where the director made the point that it, it really did happen, but nobody believes him. They're like, ha, 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 so funny. And then he just, just like gives up trying to convince people. I was like, fuck. Very different movie. Well, that's a good... <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think we get that a little bit with the, you know, in the in the yeah, car. Yeah, laughing they're... after their wedding. Yeah. All right. I agree with everything everybody said. Like, I, I, I I'm really happy they... Uh, y'all let us on this podcast because every single one of you had really good insights um, and everything that was said was like spot on for me rewatching this, especially being older and understanding storytelling better now than when I first saw it. Uh, the the one thing I do want to say to just convince people to watch it is that it's hilarious and then it gets dark and uh, I mentioned uh, dark humor, like in you know the first part. Like, um, I really, really enjoy like moments where it's like, ha ha ha! Holy shit, this is not fucking funny. You know what I mean? Like, and there's a lot of moments that happen in this story that were like this, not story, like this this experience or ride we're going through. Ha ha ha! Oh, 
This is not- oh, oh, all of a sudden, I, I feel I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed of myself for laughing. Right. And, yeah. and, and like this goes back to the icky, you know, feelings when we were talking about John Malkin. Like, I, I really enjoy getting something away from, you know, the the norm where we're actually allowed to feel things that we're told we're not allowed to feel, you know. But everybody I uh, on this uh, podcast said everything straight on point. I, I agree with everything everybody said. Uh, I just wanted to point that out as far as like my experience again watching it. And yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks for having us on. And I mean, yeah. you know, films should be a cathartic experience. And while... I do personally enjoy a positive cathartic experience. It doesn't mean that it's wrong to have a different sort of cathartic experience. So it is, you know, it is interesting when you have filmmakers that do that really well, that can, can be like, Hey, this is an icky feeling and you might not like it, but it is a feeling. And, you know, it is a feeling that maybe you push away and maybe we should live in it for a second and explore it. Uh, that can be totally interesting. You know, like I think eternal sunshine of spotless mind does that really well, where it's like, here's a really fucking painful breakup and let's live in that. Even though you mm-hmm. probably don't want right. to, you know, I mean, I, I, I can name, I can name a few films uh, that I'm, I'm glad that I watched but I never want to see again. Yeah, yeah totally, <laughs> totally, totally. We've had a few on this show, I think. Uh. What was <laughs> <laughs> well, like you know, it was like like oh, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. I was gonna say like Schindler's List. Like you're not supposed to like. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say enjoy it, but like it's what Ash said. You know, it's supposed to elicit a specific <laughs> feeling that's not pleasant. But it's yeah, it's in a cathartic experience. And then like blanking on the name of the movie, but the one that was about World War One and the two guys that go through it. Empire of the Sun. Oh no no, oh. Uh, more recent. Like just came out. No, last it's, year. it's oh, much seven, much more recent. Nineteen seventeen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Some like, number. Like that movie is. <laughs> it's really good, but it's not like a pleasant feeling that you get from it so yeah totally yeah yeah like i, I don't know, know how that... to follow up schindler's list but i, <laughs> I did want to talk about magnolia uh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah like it's that, that's one of my favorite films that i always revisit you know it's definitely on like my top lists and it's just a fucking sad experience it's not fun at all mm. and 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 even just like you want to look at it from a filmmaking perspective there's so much that you can pull from or like if you want to like do an actor study like it's but it's just not fun but uh, yeah it's hard to follow up schindler's list because <laughs> that that schindler's list is the best example sam thank you for that <laughs> yeah like, it's just like you are not supposed to be happy like you were supposed <laughs> to like hate your life like yeah. fucking like yeah. cut your wrist or some shit like shit is fucked up you know like yeah so Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, Magnolia is a great example as well. Like that movie, mm. I watched it one time and it still haunts me the way it made me feel. So I yeah, love <laughs> I, 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 I would say uh, Bad Lieutenant, Leaving Las Vegas, and uh, what was that uh, movie with uh, Connolly and um, the 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 one where Requiem they do for a, a Dream. Of- yeah. Oh. All, yeah. <laughs> All, yeah. I hate that exact, one. Exact. <laughs> like, that's my reaction as well. Like, mm-hmm. happy I saw it. Don't ever fucking show that movie to me again, ever, please. <laughs> yes. I don't. I don't. I don't need that shit in my dreams. Yes. Well. Oh, we must end the show because it's one yes. a.m. over where Pat is. Uh, so uh thank you guys so much for coming on that was a confessions of a dangerous mind fellas you want to let the listeners know where they can find you you can find us on any podcast app by searching spies like us podcast or just go to our website spieslikeus.net. and thank nice. you so much for having us on the show thank you this, i mean this was super fun like Yay. uh just i mean the, we we like talking about movies and and you guys are like way fucking fun to talk about (laughs) movies with thank you well thank you thank you for coming 
Ash, engage the audience. Yes, uh, you can also follow us. We're on Twitter at Let's Rewatch, where we do fun things like movie polls, where you guys get to choose the movie. Or if uh, if we or the guests uh, decide to choose the movie, I do fun things like tweeting a screenshot from the movie. And guys, this one was too hard. <laughs> I even gave a second screenshot to make it easier, and nobody guessed it. So you don't I'm think so the, sorry. Uh, the worldwide gross of only 30 million it was a hint yeah, that maybe right? people I hadn't guess, seen it. But <laughs> I guess that's why. <laughs> Just put I'm George so Clooney sorry. on screen, Ash. Just put him up there. I put Drew Barrymore, man. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> but I guess it's she's like silhouetted. It's like when she's at the door. I like knocking on the door, trying to get him to open it. Mm. And so like, oh, it's her yeah. silhouette. So maybe, you know, you don't necessarily know it's her, but I didn't want to, I tried to be tricky. And you didn't I do Rockwell tricky. butt? Oh, that was <laughs> good. Have. Yeah. Oh. God. Man, if we yeah. had more time, I would love to talk about Clooney's obsession to talk with about his that butt. fucking butt, man. That, yeah. yeah. It's not a bad Two butt. Two hours of Rockwell butt. <laughs> Uh, so, if you liked our podcast more than we liked this movie, please give us a five star <laughs> review on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. We love your feedback. If you give us a review, we'll read it. And please tell your friends. Thank you. And we're just not reading the two new reviews we got today because it's too late. Oh, we got two yeah. today. Aww. We'll do it next, next time. time. We'll get you. Next we time. We love you. Thank um, you. We are part of the certainpov.com network of shows. And usually I rattle off a bunch of shows, but we've been doing this thing uh, at the network for like over, over a year. And, it's, and this is the best way. Go to certainpov.com. Every week, uh, one of the hosts of a show on the network reads off like super fast descriptions of we make these little videos of the new episodes of the shows that came out on the network that week. And that's a really cool way in just like two minutes to see. If there's a show that looks cool and you want to check it out. So just go to certainpov.com and, and watch that video and you can see some of the new content that's get out. And every week we do a new one. So check right it out. I actually have to record one. Bum, bum, bum. You're up. Because I was supposed to record the, it today. The, the chore wheel fell on <laughs> it's you. It's my turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, join us next time when we watch a great movie from the 70s, uh, Mafia versus Ninja. Ooh, oh my god. What could go wrong? Man, that was a blast. I don't have to tell you that we had fun doing it with the uh, with the Let's Rewatch guys because uh you just listen to the episode and uh you can you, you already know. If you haven't already, give them a listen to their ep- other episodes. Uh, you know, just Google Let's Rewatch Podcast or put that in the search bar on your favorite podcast app. Coming back at you next week uh, with uh, our notes on the tradecraft of the 